Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Guys, I want to share a very important concept with you. It's come up a number of times just in the last couple weeks. And it's funny how that kind of thing happens, right? Like somebody says yellow Volkswagen and you start seeing yellow Volkswagens. See, tomorrow you're going to see yellow Volkswagen. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Um, things just start popping up at certain times. And, and I thought, man, this is something I got to talk to you guys about and, and dispel a myth. Okay. Um, so here's the thing is I've talked to, I've had a few conversations in the last couple of weeks and, and so it's about bypass capacitors and I seem like, you know, I'd be a little flippant with this guy. And then I kind of said, Oh, you know, let me explain. Uh, a lot of people just don't understand bypass capacitors these days. And, and you'll see, uh, them put capacitors in decade values, right? Like a thousand puff or, you know, 0.1 mic and a one mic or 10 mics, things like that. Right. In these different decade values. In one case I was watching, I was reviewing a guy's circuit years ago and there's a bunch of linear regulators and there was like 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 1, 10, 100 mic, even a thousand mic cap, all in parallel. I mean, kid you not. So that was like the the worst case of, of this myth that I've ever seen. But people believe that use three capacitors and put them a decade apart. Well, I think that came up something like 50 years ago. <laughs> It's funny how, like, I talk about the lost art of electronics, you know, and but in some cases, some of these things that were an art maybe back 50 years ago, they're no longer an art. It's like it's a myth these days. So the thing is, is like you would take maybe a big old aluminum electrolyte capacitor, maybe, oh, I've got some big ones back there, and there's a back. Okay, something like this, right? You put them in an audio amplifier, maybe a bunch of them. And there's inductance from here, you know, the wiring back to the board. And so back on the board, or even across the capacitor, which was kind of crazy, people would put, say, a one mic ferret cap or 0.1 mic cap across the terminals, where really it needs to go back on the board. But so the idea is, is there's inductance, right? Because of the wiring. So they'd use a different value capacitor to help you know, interact with that. So that way your impedance would be lower across a wider frequency band. And and then they might use several different values, you know, and and I've seen them where they're all physically placed over here, where they really need to be. The big one has to be further away because it's big, it doesn't fit on the board. But over on the board is where you need the higher frequency caps. Well, anyway, that, that thing, Maybe if you're building these kind of things and audio amplifiers, you're still kind of following that kind of tradition. But on a lot of circuit boards today, you know, the bypass capacitors, even on through hole parts like this, but especially with surface mount, you know, most boards are surface mount now, right? And especially with the higher uh, speed circuits, um, the switching power supplies, there's some sharp edges there and they're going multiple volts so that transition you know from a low volt to a high volt even if it's only 28 volts or if it's 270 volts uh there's you, you have to take care of that transition you have to supply some current for that transition and a digital circuit with you know different buses uh just clocking just data going back and forth you have to supply current for those data. So you want to bypass uh, right on the pin, right next to the the processor. Now, a lot of uh, chips, different processors, uh, different types of chips, they'll have multiple pins for you to put um, bypass caps. I mean, that's a good place to put bypass caps, but they'll put multiple power pins around the device and ground pins. And it's good to spread those capacitors across each one of those things. And still, sometimes even in app notes, you'll see a 0.1 and a 1 mic or 10 mic or something. And that's just, that's, that's something you don't have to do anymore. 
So the thing is, is today with ceramic pastures, they're very low impedance. And so you want to get them real close to the pins and you're going to be okay. You're going to switch those high frequencies, uh, those sharp edges. But here's the thing though, is, okay. All right. So let me go back to the old days, you know, back when they had memory boards or a lot of digital chips, they have rows and rows of them. They'd have a bypass cap right next to each one. With the through-hole parts, is, is really cool. I think it was Camet. Somebody came out with uh, a part, it was a capacitor that fit right underneath the chip. And it had the legs on the VCC and the ground pin. So you'd take your through-hole, your dip part, and you'd put it over this thing, this capacitor, and put it into the board. I thought that was kind of cool. But anyway, uh, you know, so people would put these bypass caps along every chip and then every so many chips they'd put like a a 10 mic tantalum or something like that a bulk passer so bulk passers are good you know uh bypass capacitors are good but you don't need to do this three cap this you know 0.1 1 and 10 mic thing just put the 10 mic down <laughs> okay guys so yeah i was talking to a guy and he was talking about you know, he has a Mac where he's doing something like this. And I go, no, yeah, you, no, don't do that. Just, um, if you have room, just put 10 mic caps next to each pin. <laughs> if you want to be sure that you got enough bulk and high frequency, just put that 10 mic cap. Now, here's the thing with the ceramic passers, there's different dielectrics. And there's an X5R, which isn't great across different temperature ranges. But if, if you're doing stuff sitting on a bench like this commercial things maybe it's fine but anyway today you know we don't use five percent resistors anymore they're all one percent right same thing with the capacitors just use x7rs it's a better dielectric it's it's a, it's better for temperature range just so just use x7rs everywhere actually if you have a critical timing or filter uh, smaller values Use COG slash NPOs. They go by both names, but use one of those. They're even better across temperature. They have a second um, effect that really helps them is they don't have any piezo effect. They're uh, like the X7Rs, the other MLCC capacitors do. So that's another benefit. If you tap you know, your scope probe, you don't see it bounce around because you don't have that piezo. It's not uh you know the vibrations aren't exciting that capacitor so that's another thing if you're in vibration environments is use those kind of caps so the three capacitor thing is a myth okay and this one guy's condition i just said put 10 mic caps everywhere and it actually took care of his problem which i thought it would <laughs> but here's what i do actually okay because the smaller 0402 caps, you know, that I, I don't like to go smaller than that, but an 0402 uh, cap, I'll put it right, I'll use one of those because I can get it real close to the pin, okay? And that'll take care of that high frequency thing. You have so many uh, nano Henry's for every, you know, bit of trace work. So to get rid of that inductance, put a small cap real close to the pins. That helps. Uh, get rid of some of that inductance that you have on your leads. Even vias will have inductance. You might have a couple of nano -Hen Henry's in inductance in a via. So put two vias in parallel or more, and that'll help, you know, drop the inductance quite a bit. So anyway, I, I, what I do is I'll put a small capacitor real close to the pins, and then I'll put a bigger cap, like a, a tent. I try to put a one mic cap, by the way, not a point one. I try to use at least one mic caps. And then I'll put a 10 mic cap a little bit further away. And if I've got three different pins that all need to be bypassed and they're all VCC pins or VDD pins, then I'll put the 10 mic cap, you know, uh, uh, anyway, I kind of spread them around. So um, you can do some math, some analysis to figure out how much capacity you need. It's not hard to do, but if they're saying use a 0.1, probably use a 1 or even bigger, okay? Um, you can look at the impedance graphs of those pastures if you want to. You can go to Kemet's website, and they show you impedance curves. 
the value of the capacitor sometimes doesn't matter so much, not as much as the physical size. So that also can be an issue. I, I was looking at a, a power supply a converter that was actually running at five megahertz, which is pretty fast for a power supply. And they recommended using certain values of capacitors. The guy did, but it didn't work. As soon as temperature changed, it wasn't working. <laughs> so I looked at it and I'm like, you know, he was using 0804s or something. I forget what he's using, but uh, it wanted to use two package sizes bigger. And the reason why is the impedance is less, okay? So when you look at, if you look at your impedance curves, you can see the, I've seen curves where they show three or four different values a decade apart, and the impedance curve of the frequency and interest, let's say even one meg would be, or 400 kilohertz or whatever, would be lower for the bigger capacitor package that had a smaller capacitance value. So yeah, anyway, there's a there's an article that three really smart guys wrote and it's called The Myth of the Three Capacitor Values. Eric Bogatin, if you guys have seen him, he's a signal integrity whiz. And Larry Smith, who I actually don't know that name, and then Steve Sandler, who I've actually spoken to. So, um, and I have his book, by the way. I mean, this I think this is his latest book, Power Integrity, which is like signal integrity, but it's different. It's power integrity. You know, power integrity uh, has to, I think, encapsulate signal integrity and power integrity. Power integrity that there's a few different things you do with power, but you also have small signal stuff and, and high speed stuff coming and going from power supplies. So uh, you end up kind of doing a little bit of both. But anyway, Stephen Sandler, this is a great book and it's pretty low cost. I'm going to put a link down below if you guys don't mind using the links. Don't cost anything extra. The Faraday Pre Press edition. The Faraday Press is an awesome publisher. I uh, love their books. You can see it's kind of dog eared because, uh, I, yeah, spend some time looking at that. And I've been looking, I've been listening to uh, interviews again recently because the guy was asking me some questions about some power integrity or signal integrity stuff for high speed circuits. And all of a sudden I was realizing like, oh man, some of the stuff I got rusty on. I spent the weekend watching some videos and, and it was coming back. I was like, oh man, yeah, okay. Whew. It's funny how when you're not doing something, you, you lose it, use it or lose it, right? So. Uh, I, I've been doing more high speed stuff and I'm going to be doing even more. So I want to bone, bone up on that again. So anyway, yeah, I felt like I've learned a lot just in a few days, just well, I relearned it, you know, and then, uh, yeah. So it's kind of fun for me. You know, I used to listen to music, but yeah, I'm kind of a nerd. So I just listened to, uh, interviews of, of, uh, signal integrity guys lately, but um, yeah, so anyway, I just want to share that with you. Uh, bypass caps, use your ceramics X7Rs, okay? Use one mic caps, don't use the point ones. A lot of app notes still show you point ones. You have to realize that, you know, years back, things were different when it's through hole, but even since it's been surface mount, which it's been surface mount for a long time, the majority, even power supplies, most of my power supplies, almost mo all the parts, not all the parts, but most of them um, are surface mount. Sometimes they're all surface mount. Anyway, so things changed. And X7R caps, can't say that enough. Use those, okay? 0.1 mic caps. The other thing I was going to say is, uh, back in the day, the vendors of these chips, these like Texas Instruments and so on, they used really experienced people, uh, LT, they used to use really experienced people to go out there, you know, FAEs, the field application engineers. Those guys used to have some, some experience behind them. Nowadays, you know, they'll get a guy with a couple years experience or a guy straight out of school. So, and the guys doing app notes, I swear, they're guys, they're interns. <laughs> I mean, nothing against interns, but they don't have the experience. And so a lot of that stuff's copy and paste. Oh, you know, point one mic caps is just like, it's just a uh, habit, I guess. It's done without thought. And so, 
for instance, if I see a schematic and if I see a bunch of capacitors and they're all the same physical size, it just makes me think like, yeah, somebody did that and they didn't really, they probably never looked at one of the curves for those capacitors. And so they're just spreading them around because of the value. And anyway, and especially when I see a mix of X7Rs and X5Rs and what is it, the Y5U, the real cheap ones, and and they don't have any COGs or NPOs, then it really makes me think like, ah, you know, they didn't really spend their time, you know, choosing the right part. So capacitors are very important. So you want to choose them correctly. And if you use X7Rs, one mic caps for bypass, I think that's a good place to start, even 10 mics. So yeah, don't be afraid of that. If you have a whole bunch of 10 mic caps on a board, then the power supply could struggle a little bit. So that's something to think about. So mixing in some bulk capacitors with some, uh, you know, and it depends on the chips, right? Every application is different, but 0.1 mic caps, just question why you're using those, okay? Look at some curves and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I can put a small 0402 one mic cap real close to pins and then a 10 mic cap, you know, still trying to keep it closed, but they end up a little bit further away because I want other parts to be close to the pin. So, anyway, all right, guys, I better get off. I was trying to make this short. Thanks for watching. Uh, two big thumbs up, my patrons and my YouTube members. Really appreciate that. Danny, thanks a lot for being a team member. And yeah, you can join down below. You can hit the super thank you. But if you just hit the like, I'd appreciate that and become a subscriber. Hey guys, I was doing a, I tried to do a Tech Talk Friday, I think I called it. I did a couple, two or three of them, and they didn't get much views. And I wanna do videos like this one, like topics like this. So should I do it on a weekly basis, like on a Monday or Friday, every other week, just randomly? Was this useful? Hopefully this was useful. This uh, bypass cap is a big thing. And as we build our circuits and as I test some of these and as I build some filters, we'll talk more about it and I'll show you, I'll demonstrate things, okay? All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.